Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. My name is Jim. So this week is going to be a burl and resin project and we're going to call this one the brain burl. Now we're going to call it that for obvious reasons because <laughs> uh, the burl itself has kind of a, a brain texture to it and I definitely want to keep this texture so we're going to turn this natural edge the only problem is we've got a really deep void here and I think that it's going to throw off this is, this is my design that I want to do. So um, this, this came to me from a client, uh, it was her parents, Burl, and it's been sitting around for many, many years. So I just took it out of my fridge kilns, it's been in there for a couple of months drying, I wanted to make sure it was good and dry. It was probably dry when it came to me, but I just wanted to make sure that it was good. Um, she wants blue in it, that's fine, it should go well with that. I originally wanted to, to not have anything in this, in this at all. I wanted to just leave it a straight wood, because uh, you know we haven't done just a straight wood project on the channel in a long time. So, but anyway, I'll show you where the issues that I have with it, and then we'll mix up some resin and put it in the pressure pot. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And of course, anytime you hit that like button, it certainly helps the channel as well. So let's get this over the table. I just want to show you what I want to do with this. Okay, so here's our burl. Um, I want to make this natural edge. So, you know, we're going to be going in like this and then on the top. But of course, that kind of runs right across this opening. So, you know, as it sits right now, if you were to do that, you might actually end up with the, this whole piece missing on this side. So that's why I believe that we got to put some resin in here. So once that resin is, is in there, then you know, this will, we can mount this the best possible way for the largest possible bowl. Right now we can't do that. The only problem is I'm hoping that none of this void area, a little hard to see in there, Hopefully that doesn't go all the way through to the side and we get some leaks. Regardless, I'll, I'll try and seal this up best I can before we put it in the pressure pot. So that's, that's the problem that I'm facing with this. Uh, it would be a real shame to not utilize all of this burl as best we can. So anyway, let's um, make up some damming area here and uh, get some resin done. Welcome to this week's video. So yeah, I'm using the um, the six mil poly again to just block off these areas for uh, resin leakage, and of course the hot melt glue. I do find using the heavy duty plastic is a lot easier than easier than cutting up plastic containers and using those. Going with the Pro Series from Desire Epoxy. She wanted blue, so this is what we're going to give her. Rainbow blue. All right, let's uh, put it in the burl. Anyway, I've mixed up six ounces total. And we're just going to pour this in. And uh, this has got an open time of about an hour. I've really put a lot of glue in this. So really hoping that it doesn't leak. Shouldn't. So anyway, what I'm going to do is put pressure in the pot. I'm going to leave it for about 15 minutes and then I'm going to come back and see how far this has dropped. And if it's dropped um, more, then of course I can always put more resin in. And I'm not real concerned about the, the resin that's on the burl and the spots. This is going to be cleaned up anyway. I've got to sand the whole Kind of edge of the bowl anyway, so whatever resin's there, I'm not really worried about it. I don't see any leaks, I think we're good. 
All right, let's put some pressure on this. All right, let's see if our level has dropped any. No, it's still pretty good. Just gonna give a little bit more. A lot of air bubbles. Anyway, I think that's gonna be all right. I realize it looks kind of messy now, but it'll be good. That looks pretty good. So there, what do you think of that? It's pretty good. I don't think that we actually had any leaks. The stuff that's in the bottom there, I believe that is from um, overflow at the top here. I should also mention that uh, any leftover epoxy that I have, have been poured it in this little container. And when it's full, then we'll have a turning blank. Um, I'll set it on an angle or an upright or whatever. I might even start throwing some stuff inside. Um, anyway, I've got two of these. This is for the Pro Series and the other one's for the Deep Cast. You're not really supposed to mix the two of them. So that's kind of why I'm doing this. But this is a good way to, uh, again, save your resin to make another uh, turning project. Yeah, this thing was so hard that I had to actually drill into it uh, for the live center and the drive center on the lathe. Again, this is the 5 eighths bowl gouge from David Ellsworth. No shavings coming off this, just pretty much powder most of the time. As you can see, um, I want to get at least two bowls out of this one burrow. Makes total sense to do that in this case. And this is my number two cutter. And of course, this is the one way coring ring. See, I can turn right-handed too. All right, so we got some pretty major cracks going on here. Uh, these need to be filled. There's a good chance that this is gonna fly apart if I don't. So I'm just gonna actually take duct tape and I'm gonna put it on the outside. I wanna try this instead of the tuck tape. And then I'll do some glue dams in here and then we'll fill this full of the same color resin. Anyway, I got a, a dam here that's good. I fill this with resin, same thing here. And hopefully that'll fill in all that stuff. Here's the backside. Gonna use the Pro Series again.
you might think that that's a lot, but the um, those cracks are actually pretty deep, so I'd sooner have too much than not enough. Okay, so it's the next day and we're out of the kiln. Um, the level didn't drop, so that's good. Did have a bit of a blowout on the back here. Uh, again, this is no big deal. I'll just grind this down before I put the glue block on the bottom. This is the, the core. I actually filled a little few spots here last night before I quit. Uh, just in an effort to fill those in. So um, anyway, I'm just going to grind these clean and then get a glue block on them. This is the Easy Wood Tools finisher. I've used this before on the channel. And it does a good job just cleaning up that resin and um, that hard burl. As you can see, I've got it tilted up on an angle as well, just so it's not so aggressive. So you'll see me using these a lot on the channel. These are three and a half inch dimple discs from sandpaper.ca and of course there is a link in the description for 10% off your next order just use code inlay gym at checkout And of course, using my little right angled air powered sander just to get in those tight areas. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I really want to keep the texture of this burl, but it was really yellowy and it wasn't going to go with the rest of the bowl, so I decided to sand it off. I also had resin to get rid of, so you know, I think it was the best decision to make. The overall shape is still there. Hey, what do you think of that so far? Got a couple little spots that I want to fill in and I'm going to do our, uh, our CA glue and pigment. So again, it's the rainbow blue and star bond thin. Link in the description for 10 or sorry, 15% off your next order. And just a little cup. Get some blue in here. It's probably way more than I need. And this is a pipe that I was using yesterday, so I'll just try and mix that up a bit. Then use the accelerator to set it. I'm just about out. There, you see that? That looks very similar to the rest of this. There, everything else I can live with. It's a burl that's going to have voids. That way, let's get it back on the lathe, clean it up, and finish sanding it. So get some finish on this. If I'm going to do any of these uh, resin, or sorry, CA glue inlays, 
I typically do it after sanding to 180. That way I can get a real good look at the surface and see what needs to be filled. Sometimes that's tough to do with just a tool surface. So I like to sand it to 180, do the filling, put it back on the lathe and then sand it at 180 and keep going up till I'm done with higher grits. Okay, so this is the salad bowl finish. Starting to gel up on me a little bit. Pretty nice stuff. Very, very hard. It, uh, I didn't get any ribbons off of this. It was mostly just dust. So it's been sitting around for quite some time. I'm going to put a coat on now and then a coat on tomorrow morning. And then hopefully that'll be it for this piece. So this is the core. I thought I would show a little bit of uh, footage of this, but, uh, not a whole lot. See those long shear scrapes. And yes, I probably could have got a small little tiny bowl out of the center of this, but I just didn't see the value in it. Just buffing the resin area with Tripoli e from the Be All Buffing System. First coat of finish of salad bowl finish for this bowl. Okay, so it's the next day. Um, when I when I took this out of my clean room, I wasn't real happy with the look, uh, so I decided to fill in some more spots. So this is why this is dull. So I filled in those spots with the CA glue and the pigment, and I've sanded it back. And all I'm going to do is take some 4 0 steel wool and just go along the rim of this bowl. And you know, again, I probably could have left it. But um, if you've been on my channel long enough, you'll know that uh, <laughs> I have a hard time letting things go when it's like this. So I prefer to, uh, I want to make the best products that I can. So I know that it would bother me if I had to let it go. So anyway, I did another filling. So this is technically the second coat, but it's probably really the first because it's going to be a, uh, the wood's going to suck up some more, more finish than it ordinarily would. So, uh, yeah, that's why it looks like that. I do apologize for the confusion over the wood bowl finish and the salad bowl finish. And of course, salad bowl finish is now called wood bowl finish, but they've taken the food safe tags off of it. I was under the assumption that it's the same product. And you know what? Maybe it is. Um, I just, I need a product that's going to say that it's food safe on the label for ease of mind for my customers. So I know that some of you have probably bought the wood bowl finish thinking that it's food safe and it in all likelihood probably is. I wouldn't worry about it. Go ahead and use it. But from this point on, I, I won't be buying any more wood bowl finish. I'll be going with something else. One of the products I'm considering is Mohawk Salad Bowl Finish. Uh, it used to be B-Lands, I think that's what, how you say it. I was under the impression that they went out of business and maybe they did, maybe they were bought out by Mohawk. Anyway, uh, here in Canada, it's sold out right now from the supplier. So I'm just waiting for it to get back in stock. 
and then we will um, do some bowls with it and see what it looks like. So anyway, I do apologize if there's been any confusion over the solid bowl finish and the wood bowl finish. And I know there's been a lot of people comment, well not a lot, there's been a few people comment on there saying that, you know, technically any clear finish that's made in the U.S. when it's fully cured has to be food safe. Uh, and of course, I said it before that I'm old school, that I don't really have a problem with using any clear finish. Uh, but of course the problem is liability. So if a company is willing to tell me that, you know, in literature, or if it's on the can, that it is food safe, then that's the product that I'm going to use. Uh, I'm not going to rely on word of mouth. I'm not a fan of all of the um, liability being placed onto the end user. So that's my position on it. Anyway, that's the second coat. I'm pretty positive uh, after the third coat we'll be able to cut this off and finish it. Alright, so this is the smaller one. And I've done the same thing. Uh, there's a lot more pigment in here now. Just to balance this out. That was one of the other things that I didn't really care for. Uh, I wanted it to be more balanced. Just can't get enough of that pearl. Here I'm just buffing the previous coat with Triple E uh, before I put on the third coat. And this is the last thing that I want to do before I part this piece off of the lathe and that's just use the white diamond just to uh, make it shine. Well, that's it for the video. I'm bringing in for a last look at the bowls here. Again, this is Maple Burl with Designer Epoxy. I know it's really shiny. And of course, we use the thin Starbond CA glue mixed with pigment to fill in any cracks. So this, I think, is 11 by 3 high. So his little brother here. I think it's nine by two. This little pearl. Again, the client wanted blue, so that's what we're gonna give her. So yeah, these bowls are spoken for, so sorry, can't have them. Um, so three coats of the salad bowl finish. Uh, I'm waiting for Mohawk salad bowl finish to get in stock here in Canada. I'll order some of that and then we'll show that on the channel and see how it performs against this. I do hear that it's um, maybe a semi-gloss, which is, you know, we'll, we'll put it on, we'll have a look at it and we'll go from there. Um, the coring system from One Way, highly recommend getting one. Uh, really, this would have been shavings if I didn't have it. So now, you know, I've doubled kind of the output of that, of that burl, saving it. And, um, you know, the thing is, with the cost of epoxy, and if you're buying wood, the cost of wood, it makes total sense to get a coring system. Um, what else? Don't forget about the discount codes in the description below to sandpaper.ca, Starbond Adhesives, and Designer Epoxy. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what we're going to do next week. Come on back. Um, probably be something cool anyway. Um, and that's it. Don't forget to comment for a chance to win a bowl coming up here for my 20,000 subscriber giveaway. So that's in the works. So I'll just be picking names from comments from each video and then we'll pull them out of a hat and that's how I'm gonna do it. And uh, that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Till next week, 
take care, stay safe, don't forget that thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. Anyway, we'll see you next week.